Today we're going to tackle application problems, also known as word problems. When we're solving word problems, there's some things we want to remember. Number one, we should always read the problem completely before we try to start to solve it. We want to write down what we know, we want to write down what we need to know, and then we want to decide how what we know and what we need to know are connected. Define a variable. It helps to define what we need to know by giving the unknown a name, usually x. It's also important to write down what x stands for. Example 1. The combined population of Asia and Africa is approximately 5.8 billion. If there are 3.4 billion more people living in Asia than in Africa, find the population of each continent. Okay, so what do we know? We know the combined population of the two continents, and we also know there are 3.4 billion more people in Asia than in Africa. So I'm going to start by choosing a variable x, it's going to be my unknown, and I'm going to let it be the number of people in Africa because it's smaller. So this will be the number of people in billions in Africa. Okay. So how does that help me? Well, if I know how many people are in Africa, I know there are 3.4 billion more. So how do I show more? I do 3.4 plus x. So this will be number of people, again, in billions in Asia. Am I leaving it in billions? I'm not having to write all the zeros, and that will just make this process a lot easier. Okay. How is this connected? Well, I know that the total is 5.8, so if I add the number of people in Africa to the number of people in Asia, I should get 5.8. X and X are like terms, so I can add them. That gives me 2X. And then I want to subtract the 3.4 from both sides. So now 2X is equal to 2.4. Let's just divide by 2. Now I know x is 1.2. Remember x, we defined it, was the number of people living in Africa. So Africa has 1.2 billion people. And then to find the number of people in Asia, we're going to take 1.2 and we're going to add it to 3.4, which is going to give me 1.2. I'm Right. So again, we have two things, and they're compared to each other by saying that the sales in the second year were 800,000 higher than the sales in the first year. So the first year is going to be my x. So sales in first year. Okay. At this point, you do have to make some kind of call of how you're going to write this, because notice it says the total revenue is 131 million. But then when they talk about the difference, right, this change in the sales that say year two was $800,000 higher, it's not given in millions. So what I'm going to do is say that 800,000 is equal to 0.8 million. That way I have them, the two terms where I'm talking in the same kind of um, quantity, right? I want to I want to do it equally. So I either have to put a lot of zeros after the 131 or I just change the 800,000 over to millions. I think that's easier. Okay. So this x is the sales in the first year. I guess we should call it the season because that's what the problem said. And then I know x plus 0.8 will be the sales in the second season. So now this is looking like our first problem because I know when I add them together, x plus x plus 0.8, I should get 131. Okay. x plus x is 2x. I have plus 0.8 is 131. So I'm going to subtract that 0.8 
to get 2x is equal to 130.2. Divide by 2. This should feel pretty familiar. So I have 130.8. I'm going to divide by 2. It gives me 65.4. Remember, that's the first season. So the first season, I had 65.4 million in sales. And then in season two, I have 65.4 plus 0.8, which is 66.2. So season two, 66.2, and this is million. Here's another example. A company has 470 employees. If there are 124 more part-time employees than full-time employees, find the number of each type. All right, so hopefully by now you're starting to catch on to what I'm gonna do. And you should be able to figure out what X should stand for. Should it be the full-time employees or should it be the part-time employees? The clue is, I always pick which one is smaller. So here it says there are 124 more part-time than full-time. So X will be the number of full-time employees. Then that means because there's 124 more, I'm going to say X plus 24 is going to be the number of part-time employees. Okay. So what we're trying to do on all of these problems, it'll only have one variable, only have one unknown, even though I'm trying to figure out two things. Because they're related, I can define X and then define the second one in terms of X. Then I look at combining them. I have X plus X plus 124 is 470. x and x is one more time 2x. There's 124. I'm going to subtract 124. That gives me 346. I divide by 2. x is 173. Remember, 173, what was that? That was the number of full-time employees, so I have 173. Now to get the number of part-time, I can do 173 plus 124, which gives me 297. Same kind of idea. A company pays their president five times as much as the vice president. If their combined income is $1,350,000, find the salary of each person. Right. So one more time where I have two things, but I'm only going to try to do one variable, and that variable is going to represent the smaller of the two. So with the president and vice president, the vice president is making less. So X is going to be the salary of the VP. This time it says the president makes five times as much as the VP. So X, if I multiply it by five, this will be the salary of the president. I'm going to add those together. So I take the vice president plus the president, and that gives me 1,350,000. X and 5X is 6X. I'm going to divide by 6. So I have 1,350,000 divided by 6. It says the vice president is making $225,000. And then the president is going to make five times that. Which is $1,125,000. Now we'll take a little change in how our problems look. I have a race charges $40 registration to run a 5K and $50 to run a 15K. If 10,000 registrations were received for a total of 435,000, how many of each type of registration were sold? Okay, so once again, we have two things and we have to decide which is which. Like, what do we want to call anything? So this time it doesn't say anything about there were more people running the 5K or more people running the 15k so we just have to pick one so let's say x will be the number of 5k runners okay. 
Then the 15K, how are we gonna write that? Well, notice there were 10,000 people all together that ran. So if X run the, ran the 5K, then the rest of them, which is 10,000 minus X, will be my number of 15K runners. So we're relying on the fact that we know the total. So if we call one X, then the rest, 10,000 minus X, would be the other part. So that's a little tricky, you have to pay attention, it is different than our previous examples. Okay. There's more going on here. We know something about money. We know that every time somebody runs the 5K, they pay $40. So how much money do we get? We got 40 times however many runners that is. And then everybody that ran the 15K paid $50, so that's 50 times our 10,000 minus X. Okay. In total, the registrations came to $435,000. So we connected quantity, how many runners we had, to the price they paid to come up with an equation. The 40x is good, don't want to do anything with that, but the 50 I need to distribute. So if I do 50 times 10,000, that gives me 500,000. And then 50 times negative x is negative 50x. That's 435,000. So again, just this nice little equation. I want to combine like terms, so 40x minus 50x is negative 10x. I still have the 500,000 on the left, and that's equal to 435,000 on the right. So let's go ahead and move that 500,000. Let's subtract it from both sides. So the left side is now just negative 10x. And then on the right side, if we do the 435,000 minus the 500,000, we get negative 65,000. Okay. Divide by negative 10. So x will be 6,500, right? Really, it just takes one of those zeros away. Okay, what did x stand for? x was the number of 5k runners. So I can put up here. 6,500 is my 5K. And remember, we said if we do 10,000 minus X, so I subtract that 6,500 and get 3,500, that tells me the rest of the runners ran the 15K. A little different. A truck driver drove 14 hours and covered 795 miles. If the driver went 15 miles an hour faster on the flat road, then in the three hours driven in the mountains, find the average speed he drove on the flat road. All right, so a lot of things going on. So let's kind of say, well, what, what do we have? We have a flat road and we have mountains. All right, so those are the two things we're gonna keep track of. But there's a lot given here, so we really wanna spend some time with what do we know. We know that he drove a total of 14 hours, but also know this, that it says in the three hours driven in the mountains. So in the mountains, he drove three hours. And if there are 14 hours in total, that means on the flat road, he drove 11 hours, okay? So the hours really aren't unknown. It was just said in a way that wasn't maybe necessarily clear. All right, what else do we know? We know there was a total of 795 miles driven. So this is our total distance. And we happen to know that 15 miles an hour faster on the flat road than in the mountains, which makes sense. You gotta go slower in the mountains, All right? So what we need is something that relates this. So here's what I wanna give you, is distance is equal to rate times time. So how far you drive is equal to how fast were you going and how long did you drive that speed? So what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to find the average speed on the flat road. But here's what we have. We know that it was faster than how fast the driver drove in the mountains. So let's let X be the speed um, in the mountains because it's smaller. And we did that earlier, right? Anytime something is smaller, that becomes our variable. And then we see that the driver went 15 miles faster on the flat road, so x plus 15, that's gonna be the speed on the flat road. All right, 
So now we're finally at the point where we've defined our variables, we wrote down everything we know, and we want to look for the connection, and the connection is here at this distance formula. All right, so the distance, which we said was 795 miles, is equal to the rate times the time. So the rate x that the driver, that the driver went in the mountains times the time in the mountains, which was three hours, plus the speed, x plus 15, that the driver went on the flat road, and then the number of hours on the flat road. I have 795 is 3x plus 11x, and if you do 15 times 11, it's 165. So let's keep going. I have 795. 3x plus 11x is 14x plus 165. Next step is just get rid of that 165, subtract it from both sides. So now I have 630 is 14x. And you should know, next step is divide by 14. All right, so finally, after all of that, we get that x is 45. Remember, x is a speed, it's miles per hour. But what speed is it? It's the speed in the mountains. What did the question ask for? It asked for the speed on the flat road. So the flat road is going to be 45 plus 15, which is 60 miles an hour. So here's our final answer, the speed on the flat road. Totally different, this one's about chemistry. So it says a chemist needs to make 500 milliliters of a 16% acid solution by mixing a 10% acid solution with a 20% acid solution. Find the number of milliliters of each solution the chemist should use. Okay. So what do we have? We have 500 milliliters altogether, and that's gonna come from mixing a 10% with a 20%. We need some variables. So how about we say X will be the number of milliliters of the 10%. And then because the total is gonna to be 500, so however much is X, the rest of it will be the 20%, so we know that 500 minus X will be the number of milliliters of the 20%. Again, we're trying to stick to one variable, just using X. So once I know one, then I just subtract to get the other one. Okay. Now I need to kind of put this all together. So I kind of think of this percent of the whole, right, equals the part. So this will show me how this is going to work together. So I start with the percent. So my percent is 10%, and I want to write it as a decimal point 10 of the whole. Well, that's x. And then plus my other percent, which was 20% of the whole, which is 500 minus x. And then what's that going to give me in total? Well, my plan is that it's going to give me 16% of 500. Okay. So I get part from my 10%, I get part from my 20%, and together it gives me what the total should be, which is 16%. So once again, we have an equation with one unknown. We want to distribute, gather like terms, and just solve for x. So the 10% of x is kind of good. Let's just leave that alone. Um, now we need to do 20% of 500 which is 100, and then the 0.2 times negative x is negative 0.20x. On the right side, I have 0.16 times 500, which is 80. Combining like terms, I have 0.10x minus 0.20x, so I'm going to say that's negative 0.10x plus 100 is 80. Well, let's look at it. I have the 100. Let's move that over with the 80. Right, we're gathering like terms, and so I have negative 0.10x equals negative 20. So our last little step right here is to divide by negative 0.10. Negative, negative is positive, that's good. 20 over 0.10 is 200. What is that? Well, one, this x told me how many milliliters I need of the 10%, so I'm going to have 200 milliliters of the 10% acid which means the rest of it, 500 minus 200, says I'm going to have 300 milliliters of the 20%. Okay. Here's our last one. You decide to make a move across the country and hire a moving truck to move your belongings. You and the truck leave your former residence at the same time and follow the same directions. 
but you're driving faster, right? So if you are driving an average of 69 miles per hour and the truck is driving an average of 54 miles per hour, how long will it take for you to be 25 miles ahead of the moving truck? Of course, a big moving truck ride is gonna go slower than you are. So we just have to figure out like, when are we gonna be 25 miles ahead of the moving truck? So let's fill out a chart. All right, so what are we trying to kind of figure out? It's kind of like a distance, right? So what did we have from before? And let's say that this one is the truck and the first row, and let's say the second one, this is us, or we're gonna call it you. Um, so what did we have? We said that we are driving 69 miles per hour. So here we are at 69 miles per hour, and the truck is going 54 miles per hour. And in the future, however far the truck is gone, we have gone 25 miles farther. So x will be the distance truck has traveled. <laughs> right. And the thing that's really tying them together is the time. The same amount of time has elapsed in both circumstances. However, how long it took us to get to x plus 25, it took the same time for the truck to get x, right? So this is the same for both us and the truck is this distance or this time that has elapsed. Now earlier we said distance is equal to rate times time. Let's solve for time and let's go ahead and write this as d equals rt. So I'm going to get time by itself. I'm going to divide by r. So t is d over r. So this is what I'm going to set the same. I'm going to look at the distance gone by the truck, which is x, divided by 54. And then we're going to take the distance that we've gone, 25, and divide it by 69. So we're setting up these equations, that the time is equal to the distance over the rate. So remember, looking at the truck, the distance was x, the rate was 54 miles an hour, and that's supposed to be the same as the x plus 25, and the rate was 69. We've solved these before. When we have fractions set up to e equal to each other, we do cross multiplication. So I have x times 69, this is 69x, is equal to 54 times x plus 25. So I keep the 69x and I distribute the 54. So I have 54 times x is 54x, then I have 54 times 25 is 1350. Let's go ahead and move the 54x over. That gives me 15x. I still have 1,350 on the right. Let's divide by 15. Which says x is 90. Okay. Remember what 90 stands for, because we're not driving 90 miles an hour. This is miles. Right? If you go back and look at what we said earlier, x is the distance the truck has driven. What did the question ask? It says, how long will it take for you to be 25 miles ahead of the moving truck? So we still haven't answered the question. All we did was figure out how many miles we've gone. But remember this equation. Time is distance over rate. So now I could pull this first equation, which was x over 54, and say our time was our distance, 90, over the rate of 54. So let's do 90 divided by 54, this is 1.67 hours. If you want to be more exact, um, you could look at 0.67 hours. So I'm going to take 0.67 times 60 minutes in an hour. This says that I have my time is one hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> 